Good morning, everybody. How are you guys doing? It was a beautiful and is a beautiful Michigan weekend. A little hot, but we're not going to complain, are we? Because we know what is ahead in months to come. So glad you guys are in church. Thank God for air conditioning. We said, you know, years ago we were in a building, first building, or the second building, and uh, before we moved into the Romance building, we built that building many years ago, and Pastor Jeff used to always say, just think, because the first building we were in had no air conditioning, the second building, no air conditioning. He said, just think, in our new building, five air conditioners. Everybody knew we had five air conditioners in our Romance building, and then we got to this building, of course, I don't know how many air conditioners there are, but there's enough. We can all stay cool. So welcome once again to church. We are kind of in a new theme this month, uh, so to speak, and we're talking about how to develop a cheerful spirit. Who thinks that would be a good thing to have these days? Yeah. We live in a world that's not so cheerful. <laughs> and so, but yet by God's design, I love, I love the way the Lord works because the foolishness of men, let's put it that way, is the wisdom of God. Like when people want to be mad and angry and depressed and oppressed, God's answer to things like that is cheer up. Rejoice always. And it almost seems as if he's minimizing what we're going through. And yet he knows it's the joy of the Lord. It's that merry heart that gives us strength. The Bible says a merry heart is good like medicine. I mean, I just love that God had all the answers already written down in the book before we had the problem. So we're going to kind of jump into it, and um, I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised, I hope, and, uh, and blessed, and get some real practical handles today. So let's pray. Father, thank you so much for the opportunity to be in your house, to be in your church. Jesus, the church is the thing you are building on planet Earth, and what a privilege to be locking arms with you, Lord, to build your church, to encourage your people to speak your word. And Lord, apart from the Holy Spirit's power, it's just words. It's just a person on stage talking. But if you anoint and if you take these words and speak to hearts with impartations of grace and wisdom and revelation, then everything changes. And Lord, that is what I ask you to do today. That is what we ask you to do today for all of us. Let us hear from heaven. Let us get some answers, maybe in an unexpected way, but let us get answers that we need to develop that cheerful spirit and have strength for the days ahead. In Jesus' mighty name, and everybody that agreed said, amen. amen. Well, okay, so we're going to talk about how to develop a cheerful spirit specifically by giving and all the people said. <laughs> Second Corinthians, let's go to Second Corinthians chapter 9. I want you to see this. And I really feel like there is some, some revelation the Lord's given us on this that will encourage you, not only revelation like theory, but also things Pastor Jeff and I have lived out and walked out our whole married life. So not only is it great theory, we also know it works. So let's read this scripture, 2 Corinthians 9, verses 6 and 8, 6 through 8. Remember this, a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop. Well, every farmer knows that. Any of you that are gardeners, you know that. But the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. Again, common sense, agriculture, farming. He uses this analogy of farming, because we, we get it, we understand the principle of the seed when it comes to farming. Verse 7, you must each decide, so this is an individual decision for each and every one of us, you must, must each decide in your heart how much to give, and don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure, for God loves a person who gives cheerfully. We'll come back to that. And God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. Now, in this passage of Scripture, the Apostle Paul is talking to the Corinthians about a number of things, but they had some needs. Some other believers had some needs. And he was basically teaching them a principle for life 
a principle for harvest. And it's common sense. We all sort of get it because we understand the seed principle in the natural. And the spiritual principle of the seed is, is even more dynamic. But we're not going to talk about that per se today. I just want to give you a little background on this passage. Like, why are we talking about this passage? Because the key phrase as it relates to how to develop a cheerful spirit, the key phrase is, for God loves a person who gives cheerfully. Well, that's a funny statement. Doesn't God love everyone? Isn't it, for God so loved the world, he gave his only... Isn't that God loves everyone? So what does this mean? What is the distinction? Why did he call out a particular group of people? God loves a cheerful giver. Well, he loves everybody, so we do know that's true. But apparently there is a special reward we'll see here in Scripture, a special blessing for those who are not just givers. You can be a begrudging giver. <laughs> you know, I'm not just talking about money. I'm talking about just in life. You can do a lot of nice things but have a really bitter spirit about it. But what God loves is a cheerful giver. So what does that mean, God loves a cheerful giver? Because there must be something. Why did he highlight them? Why did he call them out? Well, so a couple of thoughts here. The word cheerful. Let's talk about the word cheerful. What does it mean? Do you know that the actual Greek word for the, the word cheerful there is, I'm going to try to pronounce it, hilaros. Hilaros where we get hilarious. Be a hilaros giver. Be a hilarious giver. Now, not hilarious like, you know, just falling out of your seat laughing. Not that kind, but so glad, so merry, so happy, he's talking about, because in essence, the, the way the hearers of the day would have heard this is because God's been so good to you. How could you not return back to him some of your goods, your material wealth, your treasures, your time, how could you not give back to God with such a glad, merry heart for all that he's done for you? That was the context of this. And the word is hilarious, which I think is such a good thing to ponder. Because, you know, when it comes to talking about money or giving or, you know, anything along this line, people usually shut down. I hope you're not shut down. I hope you're still here. Because for whatever reason, we get like weird about, we don't get hilarious. But we should, I'm going to tell you a story in a little bit, we should, we should be hilarious about this. There should be a merry heart about this, a cheerfulness, a joy, because we know what's on the other side of it, because we know God loves a hilarious giver. And there must be some special blessings attached to the hilarious giver because he specifically called it out. He didn't just say God loves everyone who goes to church, but he does love everyone who goes to church. But he didn't say that. He specifically highlighted a group, so we have to find out why. Why did he highlight this group, and how can we develop a cheerful spirit? Y'all, y'all with me? So let's find out here then, how does God love a cheerful giver? How does he do it? How would we recognize it? Here's what he tells us in really the last verse we read in verse 8 of this passage. I'm going to read it to you from the Amplified Bible. I want you to see what it says. And then we're going to kind of go on a little journey. We'll tighten the bow here in, in just a minute. 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8 from the Amplified Bible says this, And God is able to make all grace every favor and earthly blessing come to you in abundance so that you may always and under all circumstances and whatever the need be self-sufficient, possessing enough to require no aid or support and furnished in abundance for every good work and charitable donation. How does God love a cheerful giver? Well, there's lots of ways, but right here, Right here's about five. Right here's a list of ways God loves, blesses, rewards that cheerful spirit of a giver. Here's what it says. 
or here's some, some definitions. Grace, what does he do? He's able to make all grace abound to you. All grace. Do you know, and I, I think you do know, but let's just remind ourselves, everything we do, everything we have, everything we are is by his grace. We wouldn't know anything. We wouldn't be able to do anything. We wouldn't have anything. We wouldn't be anything apart from his grace. And God's grace is not some ethereal subject. God's grace, listen to this, God's grace is a tangible spiritual substance. It's an impartation from his throne of grace. He imparts grace to you and I. Now, that your first taste of grace, and mine too, our first taste of God imparting to us this tangible spiritual commodity was the grace we needed to be saved. In other words, you weren't thinking about God. You weren't thinking about your eternal salvation. You weren't like mindful of a relationship with God, living a life pleasing to the Lord. None, I'm guessing, none of that was on your radar for a period of time in your life. I know in my life, for the first 19 years, I was not thinking about that. Now, I went to church. I, you guys know I was raised Catholic. I grew up going to the Catholic church, for, I, for which I am eternally grateful. So thankful for my background in going to church and hearing about God. But he was not the Lord of my life. I was living my life. I was the Lord of my life. <laughs> Anybody else out there? I was religious, but I was the Lord of my life. Well, then when God's grace begins to come in, he begins to open up your heart and your mind and the, the eyes of your heart to see things different, to begin to think about eternity, to begin to think about things that really matter, to begin to have a hunger and a desire to get to know this living God. That's what grace does. And God's always pouring out grace. It wasn't just a one-time deal. It wasn't just, hey, get your salvation booster shot of grace and call it good. No, he's always pouring out grace. In fact, Romans 5 tells us that if you and I will receive an abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, we can reign in life. So what's God's goodness, blessing? How does he love the cheerful giver? He gives you all grace. Daily, you need an injection of grace today to know something, to do something, to have strength. Literally, grace, by definition, is God's enablement. God enables you to do something you don't think you could do. Evan, in the name of Jesus, grace to you. An extra dose of grace to you. From the top of your head to the soles of your feet, grace, grace, grace in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> God's grace, it's his enablement. It's, it's not a human thing. It's a God thing. There's a, for Evan just now, there was a deposit from heaven imparted into him, all grace. And he, and he says here in the word that one of the rewards, one of the blessings of the cheerful giver is all grace. And God is able to make all grace abound to you. What else? Number two, every favor and earthly blessing what? Earthly blessings? I thought God only cared about spiritual blessings. Well, apparently not. Every favor, you need a favor? You need someone to give you favor? You need a door to open? You need just a well-greased life that seems favored? That's part of how God loves a cheerful giver. Every favor and earthly blessing. Do they all pour out in one day? No. Over the course of a lifetime, every favor and earthly blessing comes to you. That's funny. It tracks you down. Just like the Bible says, the blessings track you down. Listen, we can tell you, I can tell you from experience, okay? Let me just tell you. When I first began to be a Christian, came to know the Lord, and began to hear and understand this concept, you, you, have, to, you have to know where we came from. I was raised by a single parent. We shopped on the clearance rack. I never bought anything full price. In fact, just the other day I was at Myers, and I bought a can of Del Monte. 
vegetables and fruits. Del Monte, canned vegetables. I know, probably none of you eat canned vegetables because you're all organic, but I'm still eating <laughs> canned vegetables. <laughs> How many of you eat canned vegetables? Anybody? Okay, like six of us. Awesome. But no, I'm not kidding you. I was reminded when I put the Del Monte in my car. I said, Lord, you're so good. I'm buying Del Monte. Because my whole life, I bought generic brand. I I was the grocery shopper as I was being raised with my sisters, my three younger sisters and my mother. I did the grocery shopping. Our whole cart was filled with black and white food items. They were called generic. (laughs) And I used to think the people that could buy Del Monte, God bless you. Look at you rich people buying Del Monte. (laughs) And literally, I was so, I was just thankful again to the Lord just about two weeks ago when I bought Del Monte. So this is where I came from. I was in a church service. I was in college and getting a hold of this. And they were talking about giving. And, you know, I did this, what probably a lot of you do. I'm like, oh, gee, I don't want to hear about that. I, I don't have any money. I had $50 to my name. That's what I had, $50. And I wanted to go to Bible school after I had just graduated from college. I wanted to go to Bible school. And I've got no money. How am I going to go to Bible school? And they were talking, and, and I decided at the end of that service, I decided to give my $50. I thought, well, the $50 isn't going to get me to Tulsa. So I'm going to go with zero and, as opposed to 50 if I even go, because how am I going to go with no money? But I just thought, God, you're God. I trust you. You're bigger than everything. And that was the first step for me. I just gave my 50. And I said, okay, God, well, thank God I live with my parents, live with my mother, because otherwise I'd be homeless right now. And so I'm just praying you open some doors. And he did. What I'm, what I'm trying to tell you is I started there, but then wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of witty ideas and favor with this person and open doors over here, things began to happen. And I went from that place in life and not being able to buy Del Monte to we are so blessed, it's it's just ridiculous. You know, the Bible talks about that the blessings will overtake you. The windows of heaven would be poured out upon you. You would not have room enough to receive it. What was that? Oh, my bracelet. No big deal. Don't need that one. (laughs) See, the blessings are just overflowing. (laughs) <laughs> no, but I'm not kidding you guys. Like when Jeff and I got married, I, here's what I brought to the wedding. I brought books and tapes. Books and tapes. I brought books and tapes. And you, but you were enough. <laughs> I was enough. <laughs> More than enough. <laughs> I brought books and tapes to our marriage. That's all I had. He had a house, a car, furniture, a lot of nice stuff. <laughs> Jackpot! (laughs) But, you know, but then he gave up a lot to go to Bible school. He was a business owner of a multi-million dollar company. The company went on to make multiple millions. He owned another company. He left all of that to go to Bible school because that was God's call in his life to pastor. So we know what it's like to give away a ton. We know what it's like to have nothing. And now here we are in this season of life. We have so much stuff there is not room enough to receive it. We're going to give away a bunch of stuff. Just so you know, in case you all need stuff, hit us up because we're going to get rid of a ton. Come next week. Come next week. (laughs) It'll be in the atrium. No, I'm kidding. (laughs) But I'm just saying this works, what I'm talking about. He's able, able to give you all grace, every favor and earthly blessing, next one, in abundance. Not just a little bit. If you say you're living on you know, a little get-by street right now. He wants you to have abundance so that you're blessed and you can be a blessing. What else? Always self-sufficient. You know, maybe you're in a season, you're not self-sufficient, and it troubles you. God wants you to be self-sufficient, requiring no aid or support. And then finally, furnished in abundance. You'll have so much, he says. I want to furnish you with so much abundance. You can always give cheerfully to every good work and charitable donation. You just always, you you become a conduit. And the way you become that is this cheerful piece. Because otherwise, you're always holding on. Otherwise, you have a scarce mentality, a lack mentality. Oh, there's not enough. You know, we might run out. How many of you bought candles for Y2K? Well, you know, just in case everything 
went to kaput. You got candles. We bought so many candles. And what do the candles do? They sit in a drawer for a decade. The way to get free from a scarcity mindset, a poverty mindset, a lack mindset, a stingy mindset, you know what the secret is? Go burn all your candles. Go burn all of your candles. Get rid of them. Go give stuff away. Clean out the junk drawer. Give everything. Start getting that freed up, cheerful giver mindset. And you open up a conduit. God loves a cheerful giver. And all the people said, Amen. now, why does he love a cheerful giver? Because this is also a funny question to me. Lord, why? I mean, you love everybody, but why did you highlight the cheerful givers? What, what's the deal? Why do you love cheerful givers? Four reasons God loves a cheerful giver. Number one, because they are like him. Number two, because they imitate him and the world he created. Number three, because they reflect his whole plan of grace. And number four, because they see things from his perspective. So we're going to hit these quickly, but let me just give them to you. Number one, God loves cheerful givers because they are like him. God is a cheerful giver. He is nothing but a giver. If you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, Jesus said, how much more will your heavenly Father give good things to those who seek him? He is a cheerful giver for God so loved the world he gave. Everything about God is a cheerful giver. Now, here's the thing. He likes to be around people like him. How many of you like to be around people like you? You know, you go somewhere, you're at a party, you're at an open house, you're at a wedding, you're somewhere, and you're scanning to see, is there anybody here like me? Is there anybody here I might click with? If you're a young mother and you see a young mother with little toddlers, you might think, oh, we're kind of alike. Depends on, you know, whatever season of life you're in, but, but we all like to be around people like us. There's a comfort. We have the same sense of humor. We maybe have the same history. We, we just click. Y'all know what I'm talking about? When you click with people, it's nice. It's nice to have clickage with people. That's how God feels. It's nice for God to have clickage <laughs> with people that are like him. Generous, cheerful about it. You know, if you're an avid pilot, you love to talk to pilots. If you're an avid golfer, you want to talk about the latest putter, about whatever tricks you've learned to get a better score, right? If you're into thrifting, man, tell me where are the best thrift stores? Like, whatever you're into, you want to find people that are into that. That's how God, God loves a cheerful giver because they're like him. And he's like, man, I want to bless you with some extra special blessings because I like people that are like me. And all the people said. Amen. Number two, I want to show you this really quick. Let me show you this balloon story because I think this is cool. This is such a great picture of having that cheerful, generous, giving spirit. Look at this. A professor gave a balloon to every student who had to inflate it, write their name on it, and throw it in the hallway. The professor then mixed up the balloons, and the students were then given five minutes to find their own balloon. Despite a hectic search, no one found their balloon. At that point, the professor told the students to take the first balloon they found and hand it to the person whose name was written on it. Within five minutes, everyone had their own balloon. The professor said to, just, said to the students, these balloons are like happiness. We will never find it if everyone is looking for their own. But if we care about other people's happiness, we'll find ours too. Isn't that good? Simple? But that's the giving spirit. That's that cheerful spirit. It's not like, well, no, I can't find my balloon, so I'm just going to pout. No, here's your balloon. And everyone got their balloon. That's how God's kingdom is set up. Number two reason God loves a cheerful giver is because they imitate him and the world he created. Now, you got you to hear some of these things. It's amazing. The cheerful giver marches to the beat of God's creation. 
the natural order of things that God set up. So here's some examples. The sun, the sun in the sky, the sun, gives continually heat, warmth, light. The sun gives, the sun never takes. The sun gives continually, generously, cheerfully. The moon reflects the sun and gives the reflection cheerfully. Trees, what do trees do? Trees are also in this cheerful giving cycle. In fact, the Bible tells us the trees of the field clap their hands. But trees give continually to the air. Now, I always get this mixed up. Do trees give oxygen or carbon dioxide? Well, it can't be carbon dioxide. We'd all be dead. <laughs> Is it oxygen? <laughs> trees give us oxygen. But they're always giving. Among other things, they give us fruits and et cetera. But they're giving. Trees are always giving. All of God's creation was designed to be giving. Cheerfully, have you ever seen a tree mad about it? I'm just getting so tired of giving you people oxygen. Get your own. <laughs> what else? The seas. The seas evaporate, give their water and condensation up into the clouds. They give their water to the clouds. The seas do. And then the clouds give rain. Think about every function in God's creation, there's a giving piece of it. God loves a cheerful giver because they're in step with imitating the world that he created. Let's look at apples. I love this one. I've always loved this. Apples. Apple trees imitate the generous nature of God. Now, look at this picture. One apple tree, they say average, one apple tree gives us 250 apples. Now, some trees may give more, some less, but this is an average. One apple tree gives us 250 apples. One apple has five seeds. 250 apples times five seeds equals 1,250 seeds on one tree. That's cool. If you took all of those seeds and planted them, and they all turned into a tree, then 1,250 trees times 250 apples equals 312,000 apples times five seeds equals 1.562 million seeds in one generation. One generation of an apple tree that generously gave us apples went from one tree with 1,200 seeds to multiple trees with over 1.56 million seeds. God is generous. He's not into lack or scarcity. And I've shared this before. You go to an apple orchard, and you've got apples on the ground rotting, thinking, oh, man, look at all those apples that rotted. They're rotting. Nobody got to drink the apple cider, make the applesauce, eat the apple. Wow, we say, what a waste. God says, that's just abundance. That's just my definition of abundance. God is not freaking out about the rotting apples. He's not freaking out and calling it waste. His mindset is so abundant. And he likes people that think like that. And that live like that because they're not into scarcity and hoarding and stinginess. They just know there's more where that came from. And all the people said. Okay, last one here. Well, almost, last one. Uh, God loves cheerful givers because they reflect his whole plan of grace. I mean, God's whole plan of grace is nothing but generosity and his cheerful giving to us. For God so loved the world he gave, his only begotten son, that whosoever would believe in him would not perish but would have everlasting life. The Bible tells us concerning Jesus, his whole mission to earth. You know, you see pictures of Jesus, and he doesn't look like a happy person. But the Bible tells us, for the joy set before him, he gave his life on the cross. The Bible tells us that God anointed Jesus with the oil of gladness. He was cheerful. He was a cheerful giver. He was a cheerful person, and he gave his life. 
God loves a cheerful giver because you're just in step, exactly like his redemptive plan of grace. Number four, God loves a cheerful giver because they see things from his perspective. They're not temporally minded. They're faith-filled, and they see things from eternity's perspective. They know they're 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 years on earth is a blip on the radar screen. Their eyes are set well beyond that to the millions and the billions and the trillions of years to come. And so then they invest their temporary life in such a way as to impact eternity. This pastor of a megachurch was visiting another church in Africa. I thought this was cool. I will never forget a church I attended outside of Nigeria. It was the first time I was attending that church, and the entire place looked very beautiful. All the members were shining as they came to church. With the way everyone was looking so radiant, I concluded, God must have really prospered these people. Then I observed something. When the pastor got up and said, it is offering time, everybody jumped up and began to rejoice. The Holy Spirit then said to me, that is their secret. They are cheerful givers. Givers. 